Hey there, pre-calc friends. I thought it'd be nice to go through the quiz review packet that we have online for our quiz for 4.1, 4.2, and just go through the problems with you. So you can see a video of me walking them through in case you can't remember how to do some of these. All right, so I'm gonna go problem by problem. Feel free to play with them with me as you're doing them um, and just check and see how you're doing. As you're doing this, try to find some problems that you feel like ah, I'm still a little bit weak on. The one thing that makes this review a little bit tough is that the problems are kind of scrambled. You have all different types on these pages. So in a way, if you want to first study, it might not be a bad idea to go back and just do all of the same type of problems first until you feel really good. And then you can come back and do this in sort of its scrambled form. But for now, I will go straight through each one. So it will be a little bit scrambled, but feel free to skip around the video if that helps you be more consistent and constant with the same types of problems. Number one, review one, number one. We want to try to find out what is the complement and what is the supplement of 68 degrees. All right, as a reminder, complement are two angles that when you add them up, you get 90 degrees. Supplement are two angles. When you add them up, they equal 180. All right, so I want to find out the complement and supplement of 68. One way you can think about it is you can call your complement X. I don't know what it is. I just know that when I add it to 68, I should get 90. So I'm going to set up a mini equation. How about my complement answer plus 68 should be equal to 90. So what is X going to be? The answer we're looking for is going to be 90 minus 68 degrees, and that's equal to 22 degrees. So the complement of 68 is the angle that when you add to it, you should get 90 back out. So the complement should be 22. We can do the same idea with supplements. We can say X answer, the X supplement plus 68 should now be equal to 180. So same idea, how about X is equal to 180 minus 68 degrees, and that's about 112. And that's the answer for number one. If you're okay with that, you would be good over here and review three, number one, same idea. Do you have any more like that? Yep, yeah, number five, that's a good one too. And the answer key, if you saw online, are all here. So you can scroll through and see. All right, so that problem is done. I'm not going to do any more of those. I just want to get you one touch to get an idea. Number two, let's try to find two coterminal. That's our big keyword there, coterminal values of this angle. We want to get one positive, and we want to get one negative. Okay, folks, remember that coterminal. A coterminal is an angle that when you spin it around, again, a full circle, you get the same terminal ray back out. So when I add 360 and I spin it around a full time, I'm gonna get the same sort of arm of this angle back out, and that's called coterminal. And similarly, what I can do is I can go backwards and go clockwise, a negative angle, make that same ray or that same angle, and that's called the negative coterminal. So the big trick is you're basically just gonna either add or subtract a full circle or 360. All right, so we'll take 390. Let's try to find the positive coterminal. So we can do that by taking your angle and let's spin it around a full circle of 360. And when you spin it around, you add 360 and I basically just get 750 degrees. So 750 degrees is the answer for the positive coterminal. And I got that by adding a full circle of 360. Let's find the negative. All right, the negative is going to happen when you take your 390 and we subtract 360. All right, let's spin it around clockwise. Let's spin it around the negative direction and see if we can get the same ray or same angle back out. If I do that, I get 30 degrees. All right, that sounds great, but remember, the question said find one negative. I know we spun it backwards over here, but did you get a negative answer back out? No, we didn't. If that happens, you're doing a great job. You just haven't reached a negative angle out. So you know what you're going to do? You're going to take your angle and you're going to spin it around again. Keep spinning it another 360 backwards until you get a negative angle. So here we go. Let's take 30 and let's keep spinning it until we get a negative. So I'm going to subtract another 360 and I get negative 330 degrees. So my two answers, my positive coterminal was 750. My negative coterminal R is negative 330. Those are all the same angles, 390. 750 and negative 330 are all the exact same angle when you draw them. Shall we check to make sure we got it?
there we go, negative 330. They also say 30 because along the way, folks, if you notice, on our journey to the negative angle, do you notice how we stopped by another positive angle? You can consider that a positive coterminal as well. So either you could have taken 750 or 30 as your positive. I think it's just easier in our brains to remember, let's just add 360. So just doing 750 is fine. That's the answer for number two, which means now you can go over and do review three, number two, and review five, number two. The only thing that's different with no, review five, number two, is you want to add 360, but remember in radian lands, that is two pi. Now, how do you add and subtract two pi? Uh, here comes your algebra, right? You need to find a common denominator. So I'll let you figure that out. Try to add or subtract those two angles with fractions and a common denominator. All right, that type of problem is done. Number three, we don't do anymore. Once we have next term, we got rid of this kind of problem. So going through anything that's called arc length or sector area, you can just skip. And I think on the review sheet online, I think they're already crossed out. But for our purpose today, I'm going to cross them out again. We don't learn that anymore. It was actually kind of cool, too. I like learning that stuff, but we had to get rid of it because of next term. No worries. Number four. All right, this is a pretty straightforward problem. It's just remembering, what does this mean? And go back to sine. I just want to find the sine of theta. So in your brain, you need to be thinking, so of Sokotoa. I just want to find the sine of theta. Here's your theta here. I want sine. So I want to find the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. All right, where's the opposite? Okay, that's theta. My opposite would be here. Ooh, I don't have that. Okay, I'll figure that out in a second. And my hypotenuse would be over here. Okay, so I know right now that the sine of my angle theta opposite over hypotenuse would be whatever that star length is divided by 7. Your job is to find the star. Well, remember in right triangles, if you ever have two sides, the way to find the third is our good old friend, Mr. Pythagorean. So why don't we do a little Pythagorean action over here to figure out what's going on. Okay, I'll call 6 could be A. My star could be b, and the hypotenuse is always c, right? So here's Pythagorean. How about a squared plus b squared equals c squared? So I said a is 6, 6 squared, plus b squared sort of our star side over there, and c is 7. This gives me 36. This gives me 49. And we're just going to solve for b. So just some normal algebra here. When I get the square root of both sides, I get b equals the square root of 13, let me check, is there any perfect square number that I can pull out of there and simplify and get something like, I don't know, 2 root 5 or something? And unfortunately, there's not here. Square root of 13 has nothing we can do to reduce because 13 is a prime number. So b is root 13. All right, b is coming back over here for my orange star. I'm going to make room here for that. All right, so let's take a look here, folks. What's the sine of theta? The sine of theta is opposite the star over 7. The sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, and that's my final answer. All right, so just remember that sine, whenever you find the sine or cosine of tangent, you're just thinking so ka toa. That gives me number four, which means you can now do number three, which means you can now do number four over here. Any others? Yeah, a bunch of these. Ooh, secant. Remember for secant, secant is the reciprocal of which friend? Oh, I heard you say cosine, nice job. So what I would do is once you go and find the cosine answer first, whatever that's going to be, and then you're just going to take that fraction and flip it. To go from cosine back to secant, just flip your fraction answer. In fact, just looking at that triangle really quick, do you notice that if cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, you actually have everything there. So the cosine would be 6 over 7, adjacent over hypotenuse. So what would the secant be? Just flip it and you get seven over six. Oh, I couldn't help doing that problem. That was such a fun one. So if you find anything that's a reciprocal, ooh, like number four, ooh, I wanna do it. I'll let you do it, I'll let you do it. Think about doing the reciprocal friend first, that's the tangent, and then flip your answer to get the cotangent. Any others? Yeah, all these, ooh. Remember, this is the flip of sine of theta. So why don't you find the sine first, and then you can flip it back. Good, all right, back to the first page again. All right, now we get to number five here on review one again. Number five. Number five is a really good one. This is the sine of 30 degrees. Now for this, I need you to really, really remember 
our two best friends, these two special right triangles. The 306090 and the 4545. I'm actually running out of room, so I'm going to borrow the next page over here and do it here in this blank space. Okay, we need to memorize from geometry and the SAT a 45-45-90s sides and a 30-60-90. Now you can draw the 30-60-90 any way you want. I just do it like this, but just remember where the sides go. All right, on a 45-45-90, we said the two sides are one and one because it's isosceles, and the hypotenuse is always square root of two. Memorize, memorize, memorize. On 30-60-90, the smallest angle is... So the small side is right across from it, and that's 1. So the 30 is always across from the 1. The hypotenuse is always 2. And the leftover leg across from the 60 is root 3. All right, please, please, please remember. Please memorize, memorize. Write that down a couple times, and you will never forget. Why is that important? Because back here, if I want to find the sine of 30, as long as you've got your triangles good to go, all we need is just the triangles. So let's do the sine of 30. Remember, sine is so opposite over hypotenuse. If you focus your eyes here on the 30, then we're just going to do opposite over hypotenuse. And that's it. So the answer to this one is 1 over 2. How did we do it? We used our two special right triangles. So remember those. All right, if you can do number 5, what more can you do? You can do number 4. Why is 4 a little bit different? Because I gave it to you in radians. But remember from either the unit circle or maybe going back and forth between degrees and radians using this special fraction, you can change it. But memorize it. I think it's just easier if you memorize that. This is 45 degrees. So the question is really asking for what is the cosine of 45 degrees? That's one of your special right triangles right up above it. So focus on a 45 and do so ka toa. Any others? Sure. The tan of 60, that uses a special right triangle. The cosecant of pi over 3. Again, here's a radian. You should think of it in terms of its degrees. And then you should find the sine first. Find the sine of 60 first, and then you're going to flip your answer, and you'll get the cosecant. Same thing for 5 over here. There's 45 degree angle, so find the cosine first of 45. And then you're going to flip your answer to get the secant. Any others? Yep, here's a cotangent. So find the tangent of the 31st TOA and flip your answer. Very good, very good. All right, what more can we do? One thing that's not on here that would be kind of nice is when we go back and forth between degrees and radians. Do we have those? Oh, I do have over there. Let me take a break and do this one with you. So converting back and forth from radians to degrees. We're going to either multiply by pi over 180, which is basically the same angle, if you think about it, they're both on the west side of our unit circle, or 180 over pi. Which one do you use? Well, you think about what do you want, and I want degrees, and whichever one you want, you put on top. This one has the degrees, the 180 on top, so I'm going to choose that fraction. If I wanted radians, I would use this one, because it has the radians on top. All right, here we go. Let's take 460 degrees. Uh, oh, you know what? i got to read that problem better, Mr. Brown. Ha-ha. <laughs> Vice versa. <laughs> reason I know that is because I'm in degree mode, Mr. Brown. Read the problem. Mr. Brown needs a winter break, don't you? So we're going to actually need to go into radian mode, which means I need this one. I probably would have tried it the wrong way. I would have gotten stuck and realized, oh, okay, I made a mistake. So if that happens on the quiz, just realize, oh, I should have used the other fraction. So we're going to get it into radians. So I'm going to multiply by radians on top. All right, you can use a calculator if you want to, but what we were doing in class is we were just using some basic number knowledge and trying to reduce our fractions here. I know I've got a 10 in common, so I can divide out the zeros. And then maybe I can divide by 2 because they're both even numbers. So I have about 46 divided by 2, I have about 18 divided by 2. I don't think there's more to do, so guess what? 460 degrees is 23 pi over 9. And that's the same angle as 460. All right, so just knowing which one to multiply by, don't do what Mr. Brown did and get all confused. Here we go, we're in degrees again. So we're gonna switch into radians. So you're gonna multiply by the one that has radians on top. 
You see that negative there? Does that make you a little worried? Don't be. Just leave the negative on the outside and deal with the problem as it normally is. And then when you're done, just put the negative on your answer. You'll be good to go. All right, that one's good to go too. Any others? Yeah, this one's good. I like this one here because you're in radians. You see the pi. We do want to go to degrees. So we are going to multiply by the one that has degrees on top. Let's do it. Let's multiply here by 180 over pi. You also know if you did it right because do you see how the pi is divided out diagonally? That's pretty cool. While we're at it, let's keep dividing. I see the 3 and then 180. You can always use calculator for this too. I'm going to multiply straight across and I get 2 times 60 is. And the bottom I get 1 times, well, I guess it's 1. So guess what? You can verify this on your unit circle, but 2 pi over 3 is the same thing as 120 degrees. There we go. What's left? I think there's a couple where we can maybe solve some right triangles. Let's see what we got. There we go. Number five is a really good one. All right. This is the last thing we were kind of reviewing in class. So let's try to solve for this. I will give you a right triangle so you don't have to draw it. But just so you know, here C is 90. C is usually the right angle. And the way we label the sides is we put the lowercase across from it. So if that's angle C is the right angle, the hypotenuse is lowercase c. And it makes sense when you think about the Pythagorean theorem, too. I'm going to put A up here. It doesn't really matter. But then little a should be across this way. I'll put B here and therefore little b. All right. I will give that to you. So all you have to do is just label things that you're given. I'm given that A is 17 degrees. So I'll put 17 in that angle. And I'm given that side B is 22. That's over on the left side. What's the question asking for? We want to find what is little a, which is side a. That's over here. All right, the best way to do this, try to figure out which trig do you want to use. We've got Sokotoa. Which one do we use? Well, let's take a look. Based on the 17 degrees here, keep your eyes focused on 17, and look what we have. I'm going to focus on the A, because that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to focus on the 22. Relative to the 17, the A is opposite. The 22 is adjacent. So which of these trigs use opposite and adjacent? Well, guess what? It's the tangent. So we're going to use a tangent formula here to try to solve for side A. Ready? Let's see if I have any space anywhere. Where can I go? Ooh, I'm going to use this little space here if you don't mind. All right, the trick is let's set up a tangent equation. We're going to use the tangent function. We're going to write the tangent of the angle, and the angle is 17 degrees, equals. Well, it's O, A, right? And the opposite was A and the adjacent was 22. Great, all right. Now, before I put this in the calculator, I want to do a little bit of algebra first. So it's being divided, the A is being divided by 22, so I want me to multiply both sides by 22. That's gonna destroy the 22s here, and I get A. The side A equals 22 times the tangent of 17. All right, we're ready for calculator. So you can just literally type that into your calculator. Make sure that your mode is in degree, because we're using degree angles instead of radians. And when you type it in, you should get the answer right away. 22 times 10 of 17, hit enter. Now, I don't have my calculator with me right now, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and look at the answer key for review two, number five. Let's take a peek. Review two, number five. Did you get 6.73? Me too. Just kidding. I cheated. But it should be about 6.73. And there you go. So what is A? A is about 6.73. Seven, three. So again, what did we do? We made our triangle and we labeled what we had. And relative to the angle you were given, what are the sides, the one you're given and the one you're looking for? Pick the right trig and set an equation. And now you can do all the other ones as well. Not on this page, have it over here. This is a good one too. Number five is good. And number five over here is good as well. Good. One more thing to add, though, that we did also last night is what if you're given a right triangle and you're given the sides and you're actually trying to find theta? This is kind of cool because it's a little bit different. Anytime you need to find the angle, anytime you find the angle, you need to use the inverse trig. And that means things like sine to the negative one, cos to the negative one, tan to the negative one. And I'll show you why, and I'll show you how. All right, same step as before. First of all, let's pick a good trig to use here. Well, 
based on that theta that I'm looking for, I'm given four, which is opposite. And I'm given the seven, which is across from the right angle. That's the hypotenuse. All right, which one is opposite over hypotenuse? OH, I heard you say sine. Bravo, good job. So let's make a sine equation. Even though we don't know the angle, let's still make the equation. The sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Great, and I need the theta. Now, we're really tempted. Hey, can I just divide out the sine? No, that's actually not legal. We can't do that. We need to somehow undo the sine. And the way we do that in the math, to undo a sine is we take the inverse of it. So I'm going to take the inverse of the sine, and over on the right side, to balance it out, I'll take the inverse of the sine there. It's almost like from last chapter when we took the ln of both sides, or the log. Here we're taking the sine inverse of both sides. Why? Because the sine inverse and the sine regular destroy each other. And you're left with just theta, which is what you're looking for. Yay! Now, what happens on the right side? Take a look. You have the sine inverse of 4 over 7. Good. All right, that goes right in the calculator. If you look at your sine button on the calculator, it's the blue sine inverse right above it. So you're going to use your second button and hit sine, and that'll open up the sine inverse. So you'll plug sine inverse of 4 over 7, and you'll get the angle back out. And let's see what we get. I'm actually going to talk to my Siri right now to see if I can get it. Hey, Siri, what is the sine inverse of 4 divided by 7? Let's listen. All right, it decided to give me four divided by seven because it kind of stinks. So I'm gonna input it manually. Let's do sine inverse of four divided by seven. And I got about 34.8 degrees. And there you go. So if you ever need to find the angle inside of a triangle, you've got the sides you need the angle, always remember inverse. All right, folks, I think we've gone through all the problems. I think you are good to go. So try to find which problems of these that we went over that you're still a little stuck on and try to do more of them. It's always helpful to go back and look at problems from the homework, any quizzes that we did, anything that you need to practice. But try to find what you're still weak on. But again, the so things to remember burn into your brain. When you get the quiz tomorrow, things to write down. Write down Sokotoa. Write down the reciprocals of those. What's the reciprocal of sine? Ah, that's the cosecant. What's the reciprocal of cosine? That's the secant. And the reciprocal of tangent is pretty easy because it has the tan in it. It's cotan. I would also write down those two very special right triangles over here. Draw that on your quiz right away so that when you have all these questions like you see over here, you can just use your right triangles for that. And then it wouldn't hurt to just have a little bit of the Pythagorean off to the side. And then finally, I would just say angle use inverse trig. And I think you're gonna be great. All right, we've gone through all the problems. Hope you feel okay. If you have any more questions, you can just let me know. Good luck, everybody. I'm cheering you on. Have a great night.